Hello again, partners. I can't wait to tell you what my researcher and writer, Dennis Daly, has found out about someone from recent history who changed the face and fortunes of the state my two brothers and I grew up in, Oklahoma. Yes, we were born in Texas, but we were indeed proud to say our hometown was Chickasha, Oklahoma. Chickasha, Oklahoma. It was home to tens of thousands of Native Americans and still has the highest Native American population of any state in the United States. Oklahoma was also just about the center of the bullseye when the Dust Bowl hit. The what? Yeah, the Dust Bowl. Many people know nothing about the Dust Bowl. For the better part of five years, many people in Oklahoma and surrounding areas ate their meals with a little wind-blown dust dirt in their dishes. That's right. Those dust storms were so severe, there was no way to keep the dirt and dust from blowing through the cracks in our houses. By the way, if you look at a map of Oklahoma, you'll see it has a large, nearly rectangular section and then a long panhandle extending westward. At the end of that panhandle is Cimarron County. It's the only county in America from which you can walk into five states. You heard me. It's the only one you can walk into five states. Well, naturally, Oklahoma is one of them. But the other four states are Colorado, Kansas, Texas, and New Mexico. I mentioned that county because during the Dust Bowl, Cimarron County, Oklahoma, and its county seat, Boise City. Boise City, I don't know how to pronounce that, maybe. But they were nearly wiped off the map. As a matter of fact, if you look at a map of the areas hardest hit by that horrible multi-year disaster, you'll see Cimarron County, Oklahoma, smack dab in the middle. Jimmy, Jimmy, so what? Your home state... Oklahoma nearly gets wiped away by a dust bowl. What does that have to do with this week's honoree? Well, I couldn't be happier that you asked that. You see, the man we're going to talk about this week was largely responsible for rebuilding Oklahoma by planning a series of public works that provided something, well, it, it, it was in short supply, and that was water. Yes, Minnesota has the more natural lakes than anything, but Oklahoma is where you'll find the most man-made lakes in the United States. And their construction was spearheaded by this week's honoree, whom I'll just call Bob for the time being. Bob was born in the late 1800s. He became internationally known American businessman and politician. He founded one of the world's biggest petroleum companies. He used his wealth to become Oklahoma's 12th governor, and he was elected as a United States senator and served in Washington for 18 years. Yes, it was during this time that he helped push through a ray raft of water projects that linked the Arkansas River with the Gulf of Mexico and provided water and electricity and jobs to this state. Now, partners, sit down for this. Our honoree this week, Bob, was born in a log cabin. I know this sounds like hype or image making, but it's true. And that cabin was near what today is known as Ada, Oklahoma. In college, young Bob studied to be a lawyer, but when several members of his family began to make their own fortunes drilling oil, he changed his mind. He said, wait a minute now. By 1926, he and a friend had set up their own oil company. What Bob did made a lot of sense. 
You see, in 1926, that was the year that the federal government first laid out a plan for nationwide highways. America was on the move, and it would need a lot of gas and oil. Bob, bless his heart, and his company were ready to provide what motorists needed most. Well, he finally entered politics, and as governor of Oklahoma, he brought about a miracle. Miracle? Yeah. <laughs> How's that, Jimmy? He got Democrats and Republicans to work together. Wow. You think that's not a miracle? Boy, what an achievement. <laughs> we, we need old Bob around today for sure. At one time, he was considered as a choice to be President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's running mate as the vice president. Yep, he was going to be the candidate as vice president, but uh, he got to Washington on his own, and he was being elected to the Senate. Now, his achievements in getting canals and dams built and lakes filled and people put to work are monumental, not only in the history of Oklahoma, but in the history of the United States. American politics his legacy still remains. There are over 300 man-made lakes in Oklahoma. Think of that. This provides wealth and health to the citizens of this great state. So the next time you hear about the Kerr McGee Oil Company, think of our friend Bob. Robert Samuel Bob Kerr. He was the Oklahoma oil man who used his wealth and political ambitions to perform miracles for his home state. Can you imagine? Partners, I knew Bob Kerr. I knew the governor. Well, no wonder. At 95, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm no little, uh, well, anyway. Okay, partners, you know the drill. Look up there at the right side for those three boxes. Yeah, click the farthest one at the right with the big red X in it, and swish, you'll go right back to the report page for the rest of this week's comments. Dennis, thanks for bringing this great American, Bob Kerr, as this week's honoree. It's been fun talking about him, and like I say, I can still see him when I was in school. Yes, I love you guys. Go get them, Tigers!